The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD was released on September 20th, 2013 in North America. While the original Wind Waker was released all the way back in 2002, the game was not very well received at first. Critics think the game was too childish with its cartoony art style and the sailing seconds being too slow and tedious. So, why would anybody want to speedrun this game? How did the speedrun go from this originally to this? We will be going over all of that today, because this is the speedrun and record progression for The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. To complete Wind Waker HD, there is a series of events the player has to do to access the end of the game to beat it. You start off as Link on Outside Island. You play through the start of the game, you beat Outside Island, you continue to Forsaken Fortress 1, you beat Forsaken Fortress 1, you unlock King of Red Lions, and you will get the first objective in the game, defeat Ganondorf by obtaining the Master Sword. To do this, the player has to beat the two dungeons to access the Din's Pearl and the Forest Pearl. After doing that, you will get the bombs from the pirate ship, you will find a secret cave on Outside Island, and you will obtain the third pearl, Nyrus Pearl. By placing the three pearls, you will raise Tower of the Gods. By completing this dungeon, the player will gain access to Hyrule for the first time. Now this is important for later. From there, the player will obtain the Master Sword, and you must then go to Forsaken Fortress 2. You will defeat Phantom Ganon, you will head up to the top of Forsaken Fortress, kill Halmrock King, and then face off Ganondorf. It's here that the player will find out that the Master Sword has lost its power and you're not strong enough yet to defeat him. You'll be taken to Hyrule for the second time. You follow a string of story elements, then continue your journey to gain enough power to be able to defeat Ganondorf. You must go to both Earth and Wind Temple, beat both of the dungeons, and by doing so, you will upgrade your Master Sword to be the fully charged Master Sword. The player must then find 8 Triforce spaces to complete the Triforce. From there, the player will gain access to Hyrule for the third and final time. There, you can now break the barrier around Hyrule, giving you access to Ganon's Tower. You complete the trials in Ganon's Tower, defeat Phantom and Puppet Ganon, and then you can finally face up Ganondorf and you will now be allowed to beat the game. Since Wind Waker H2 was a remake of the original game, people went to glitch hunting straight away on day one, testing what was patched and what new broken mechanic could be found in the game. People figured out that the major glitches used in the original version was sadly patched. Storage, uh, which was a glitch used to super swim in the ocean, uh, perform boss key skips, small key skips, and other skips throughout the run was sadly patched. Uh, also, the zombie hover, which was a, a glitch used to access areas early, while in theory not patched, had been nerfed so heavily by restricting what access Link could have while he was dead, it was basically not actually useful. And also, in addition to that, the Nintendo removed the Tingle Tuner, which was an item add-on that could be used to connect your Game Boy Advance to the GameCube, which allowed you to actually survive using this glitch. And with the additions of removing these things, the zombie hover glitch was sadly useless. Thankfully, however, one mechanic had not been changed, and that was how objects interacted with Link. And thanks to this, ledge clipping with objects such as bombs and pots still worked in this game, which allowed you to do a couple of skips and a couple of clips still worked to skip some small keys throughout dungeons. Uh, a thing to note is that looking at the shards from earlier on the steps needed to beat the game, even with these glitches that was known in the GameCube version at the time, you still had to follow this shard step by step, and the only real sequence break used was really as obtaining the bombs before heading to Forbidden Woods uh, when you were going to get the second pearl. Uh, and that allowed you to complete the second dungeon much faster, but other than that, it was pretty much true to the intended order of the game. But now onto Wind Waker HD. So, at the time of release, the record was 4 hours, 28 minutes, and 41 seconds by Demon 9 on the original GameCube version of the game. The first record set on Wind Waker HD was at the launch of the game, September 21st, ending on the time of 6 2033 by Dungeham. Sadly, there is still no video left of this run, and uh, I cannot show it. However, thankfully, on the very next day, on September 22nd, a time of 5 hours, 13 minutes, and 50 seconds was set by Gymnast86. This run starts off as expected, completing Outset Island, completing FF1, 
buying the sail, sailing to Dragon Roost, completing the first dungeon and obtaining the first pearl. After this, the first huge change for the HD version is coming up. In the HD version of Wind Waker, Nintendo added a swift sail, which allows you to sail at much faster compared to the original sail in the original game. However, to purchase this item, it is located in an auction at Windfall Island, which is only accessible at night. The only problem with this is how the auction is designed. So there's five items in the auction which you can purchase, and each one of these items have an equal amount of chance of appearing each time, meaning the swift sail only had a 20% chance of being found, and if you did not get the swift sail, you had to leave and reload the auction, losing 45 seconds each time, and this was over an hour into the run. In this specific run, Gymnast was able to obtain the swift sail on the third try, which is not bad at all. He then headed out to Forest Haven to obtain the second pearl, then followed by sailing to Greatfish to get the pirate ship to spawn a windfall so you could obtain bombs to access the third and final pearl. Coming up here is the first bigger skip in the run. Normally, to access the pirate ship, the player has to watch a long cutscene with the pirates to find out the password to enter the pirate ship. However, the loading zone for the pirate ship is always there behind the door, so if the player could somehow enter this loading zone, you could skip obtaining the password going through the door. That's where ledge clipping comes into play. Now, Gymnast will pick up this pod under these stairs, and he will bring it to the pirate ship, and carefully place it on this ledge. He will then backflip and leaf grab in between the wall and the pod. By going towards the pod right as he grabs the ledge, the pod will push him away, and if timed correctly, the pod will push you through the wall, clipping you through. You can then time pulling out your leaf, and leaf straight into the loading zone, skipping obtaining the password altogether. After this, Gymnast will obtain the bombs, start sailing towards Outside Island. The problem is that Outside Island is on the other side of the ocean, and sailing there takes a very long time. However, there is a boss in the ocean called Cyclopes, which is defeated with the bow, giving you a song which allows you to warp quickly to many islands in the ocean. However, if you fail to defeat him, he will warp you randomly to one of eight different locations. This is actually faster than sailing if you happen to get the correct location. The only problem is that the, the luck added to the run on top of the swift sail can get pretty rough. If you get put on outside island, you will save a minute and 45 seconds. If you get put to south and ferry, you will save 40 seconds. And if you land on great fish, you will still save 20 seconds over sailing. However, what this means is that you have a 3 in 8 chance to save time. And you have a 1 in 8 chance to actually save the full potential time. In this run, Gymnast saves before going for it so he can reload the game in case he gets a really bad location in the ocean. Gymnast got Dragon Roost twice in a row and then instead of attempting it for a third time, he has decided to sail the entire way over taking even more of a risk. After arriving to Outset, he obtains the third and final pearl, races Tower of the Gods and enters the third dungeon. Here another huge skip comes up. Tower of the Gods has three different floors. The first two floors are the main dungeon with a bunch of different rooms with puzzles and all of that stuff you're expecting from a dungeon. And the third and final floor is basically just the boss and the boss key. Now, by going up to this pillar and placing a statue close to the wall and leafing on top of the pillar, and you grab in between the statue and the pillar, if you then go against the statue, they will push you out of bounds. You can then leave to this corridor and enter the door and that will basically skip half of the dungeon, saving multiple minutes. After that, Trimnus goes through the rest of the dungeon as intended with some small skips and optimal movement throughout and defeats Godin and finishes the dungeon. He goes down to Hyrule and obtains the Master Sword. After obtaining the Master Sword, you normally have to defeat a bunch of enemies where you'll freely easily be frozen in time that allows you to actually leave Hyrule. However, by doing another light scope with a bomb at this wall and leafing to the loading zone, it allows Gymnast to leave Hyrule Castle early. From there, he can simply save and quit, and because he's on the outside of Hyrule, it will put him on the front where he can then access the King of Red Lions and leave early. Another thing I should actually mention is that you might have noticed during these past two tricks that I showed that when Gymnast is actually leafing, he's flying very good distances and he's kind of like pulling out in his leaf. This is actually a trick that we're using called leaf thumping, uh, which in this game, if you cancel your leaf and then take it out straight away a frame or two later, you'll actually be able to maintain your height a lot better, which will allow you to cross distances with the leaf that you would normally not be able to do. But either way, with that out of the way, after leaving Hyrule 1, Gymnas sails to Cyclopes you saw earlier to actually obtain the Ballad of the Gale song now since he has the bow and arrow.
He then sails to Forsaken Fortress 2, beats both Phantom Ganon and Helmrock King, and then heads up to face Ganon. He then goes through a series of cutscenes in Hyrule 2, he leaves to start the next part of the run. There really isn't anything special or major to go over here. Um, Gymnast follows the intended path, getting all the items necessary, upgrading his master by defeating both Earth and Wind Temple, completing the Triforce, and thanks to the shortened Triforce quest on the HD version over the original, he completes it much faster. He then heads down to Hyrule 3, goes up, breaks the barrier in Hyrule, enter Ganon's tower, and here comes the final major skip in the run, the Trial Skip. Normally, to get access to the final part of the tower, the player has to go through and refight all four of the previous bosses fought throughout Dragon Roost Cavern, Forbidden Woods, Earth Temple, and Wind Temple. However, by carefully leafing and grabbing these pillars in this room, then landing on top of the door frame, Gymnas can perform another bomb clip to clip out of bounds. And because he's high enough, he can actually leaf to the loading zone, skipping all the trials, saving about 10 minutes, and he can then just finish Ganon's tower and defeat Ganondorf, and he ends up with a final time of 5.13.50. Now, this run was not perfect by any means, but it still had a lot of room and improvement, which Gymnast showed off when the very, very next day, on September 23rd, 2013, he came back with a 5.0801. World record at 5.08 even. A 5 minute improvement over his previous run. There is really no difference in the strats compared to the previous no, run, just fewer mistakes, four. better luck, and better movement. Uh, five days later, on the 20th of September 2013, Junus came back again with a 4.49.15, which is a crazy improvement compared to the last run, being almost 20 minutes faster. Now, where did all of this time save come from, you might ask? Well, there's a few different reasons. First, he cleaned up his movement a lot. He got used to the HD mechanics, and he has overall had a much cleaner movement throughout the entire run. Uh, he also improved the route through the Triforce collecting aspect, which is a very long quest, and rerouting that definitely made a huge improvement. But most importantly, however, he finally implemented a boss key skip in Earth Temple. On the old routes, Gymnast went out of his way to get the boss key in Earth Temple. Sadly, however, the Earth Temple boss key is actually one of the slowest boss keys to obtain, requiring you to finish a really long mirror puzzle with Medley, and it was just overall a very slow process. However, uh, Gymnast goes up to this ledge now, he can place Medley, and if he leaves and grabs in between the ledge and Medley, he can actually use Medley to ledge clip through the wall and then leaf across the room. And he can actually land on his little ledge out of bounds. Now you might notice that this floor doesn't have any texture, but there's actually collision here for a Gymnast to stand on. This allows Gymnast to actually take control of Medley, fly her over to stand against the wall still in a bounce, uh, and then Gymnast can use that to pick her up through the wall and now both he and Medley is out of bounds. He will then walk off of the ledge with the speed, which will get Medley to get a jump. He will then continuously fly with Medley out of bounds until he gets under the door. He will then with a very well timed leaf pump, take out the leaf, let go of Medley, and it will just push him higher enough to reach the loading zone, skipping the boss key. Putting all of this together, it allowed Gymnast to finish with a time of 4 hours, 49 minutes, and 15 seconds. With this big of a leap already, you might be wondering like how long this run would stand for. Well, it actually stood for less than 10 days, because on October 9th, 2013, a new runner by the name of Finn Zenku came up and finished the run with a 4.49.14, with only finishing off 1 second ahead of Gymnast. So, what did Gymnast do after this? He came back 4 days later with a 4.35.03, <laughs> improving the record with 15 minutes. Now, how is that even possible? Well, the crazy thing honestly is, there was really no new strats compared to his run of 4 hours and 49 minutes. He got first try swift sale in auction, he opts for not even attempting the Cyclops warp, and he has to improve this gameplay and movement so much that it allowed him to save an entire 15 minutes. Because keep in mind, this is still just as the game was getting released, and there is still a lot of room for improvement throughout the entire run. 
Jimmins went back to work, and three weeks later, he came back with a time of 4 hours, 29 minutes, and 8 seconds. This run used a new clip in Earth Temple to skip opening the floor to the basement by doing a ledge coup here with Medley, and after you stand up out of bounds on this ledge, you can actually simply pick Medley up, side hop down to access the basement. But most notably, he put much work into rerouting this run. People have been timing many different possible routes and orders by doing the endgame Triforce collecting aspect, and this was his first run which used this new refined endgame route, saving minutes alone. Also, this was the first run which you might have noticed that used another language in English. You see, in the original version of the game, speedrun is reviewing the runs on the Japanese version, due to Japanese as being much shorter than English. However, in the Wind Waker HD version of the game, Nintendo actually sped up all the languages available except for the Japanese version. Meaning, while the Japanese version is played in one character per frame, or 30 characters every second, the PAL and NTSCU versions of the game had changed it so it displayed 4 characters every frame, or 120 characters a second. For a long time, people just ran in English, but when Gymnast timed each individual language, he actually discovered his Spanish and Italian saved about a minute over English. Italian was also a couple of seconds faster than the Spanish version, but Italian was only available on European copies of the game, and because the time difference only being a few seconds, Gymnast opted to stick with Spanish instead of importing a brand new console to save those couple of seconds. About one month later after Gymnast set his last record, he came back again with a 3 minute improvement, again showing his dominance in the game. With no real improvements other than just working on his own movement, he was able to finish up with a time of 4 hours, 26 minutes, and 8 seconds. Now, even though everyone's eyes was actually set on Gymnast setting another record, there was actually much more exciting parts that was coming together in the Wind Waker HD community in December of 2013. A lot of testing and working was going on behind the scenes with glitch hunting in the community, and someone actually found a trick called the roll clipping. Now, if Link climbs up inside of a wall, and you roll on the very first frame climbing up, you can actually get enough distance to actually stay out of bounds, which allows you to clip in very many places in the game that was not previously possible with the bomb clip setup. Now, this was very, very important, because it was now restrictive towards pots or bombs like the previous ledge clipping setup. Now, there were many runs that was made by Gymnast to improve the record by a couple of minutes during these next few months, implementing many of these new strats. Starting from January 24th to July of 2014, the record was improved 5 times by Gymnast. It went from a 4.17.53 to a 4.12.19 to a 4.09 to a 4.07 and then finally ending off at a time of 4 hours and 3 minutes and 15 seconds. Now that is an crazy improvement by almost 20 minutes. So what was all these new strats that made the time go down so much as 20 minutes? Like how good was the run? Well, if we look at the chart earlier, the craziest thing is nothing has changed. There was many theories about sequence breaking and actually going out of logic here, but there was really no way to get around them because there are so many restrictions in the game. So where did this incredible time save come from? Well, let's take a look. First, Gymnast is able to perform a much faster password skip in this run than he was previously able to. By using a roll clip against this wall, he can then follow this railing out of bounds and then enter the loading zone much faster, skipping the old ledge clip method that was previously used, saving him almost a full minute. Then the second trick is the puzzle skip in Hyrule 1. By going up against this pillar and performing a roll clip, he can then carefully move around inside of this railing and he can then drop down out of bounds and leaf to the loading zone. Then later in the run, Gymnast actually had to fight Helmrock every time he made it to Forsaken Fortress 2, but in this run, Gymnast will pick up this pot and walk over a trigger for Helmrock multiple times, and this will cause Helmrock to go up very high into the air, allowing Gymnast to get behind Helmrock before he lands. He can then clip inside of the floor, follow the railing around the arena, completely skipping the fight. Later on in Earth Temple, Gymnast will also perform a new small key skip with their roll clipping method, skipping some backtracking and saving about a minute, as well as having a much more improved boss key skip, skipping the last part of the trick where it required you to have medley to leaf into the loading zone. Then later on when you get to Wind Temple, Gymnast is also able to skip rescuing Makar now, thanks to a new method found to obtain the boss key early. 
By standing on this platform and doing some very precise movement as the platform is about to flip, he can land on top of the pillar previously inaccessible to the player. From here, he clips out a bounce of the bomb and then leaves around the arena out of bounds and lands on this door. He can then turn around, open the door, skipping the sandstone, which in the end skips Makar entirely. And then last but not least, the biggest skip in his new run was definitely something called the Kebenedit skip. You see, in previous runs, to get one of the Triforce pieces, Junus had to do catch and seek with all of these little kids called the Killer Bees at Windfall Island. After he did that, he then had to collect 20 Joy Pendants throughout the run to give to the teacher. And by doing so, she will reward you with the Kebenedit, allowing you to enter the house and giving you access to the Triforce piece. Now, after months of hard work and dozens of people testing, there was finally a way to skip this long side quest, saving minutes alone. You see, it was known even from the original game, they were able to actually clip through specific objects with the hookshot by doing something called an L slide clip. By starting a hookshot towards an object, then holding target and going towards the side. The problem is, we didn't know of a useful way to do this for the Kibana deed, because even if you're able to get inside of the railing, which we didn't know about, there is no way to actually enter the loading zone, because if you walk towards the Kibana deed when you're under it, you will actually get crushed. But what the new discovery was made was that by placing a bomb and then having iron boots you can clip with an outside clip under the railing to begin with, you can then maneuver towards this specific location. If you align yourself up with this mailbox right here, place the bomb and leaf it to a perfect positioning, you can then buffer into a very specific frame. And if you're able to pause in the specific frame, you can then do an L slide clip with a precise angle down right. And if you got all that perfectly with the correct frame, the bomb would explode when you're at the perfect location that it would actually push you into the loading zone, skipping having to get the cabana deed from the teacher. The only problem with this was that this trick was incredibly difficult and the trick was over three hours into the run. So this was by far the biggest run killer in this run now. Hitting this trick first try ended up putting Gymnast over 3 minutes ahead of his PB and he kept pushing through, finishing the Triforce quest, going through Ganon's tower and ending up with the time of 4.03.15. Now this was an incredibly remarkable time and you could roughly say that it would stay for a while. This run was set on June 30th, 2014 and all of 2014 passed and the 403 stood as the record. Heading into 2015, no one was still up to the task of beating it. A runner by the name of Halfos actually had a very respectable time of a 406 and he actually had a run that was on pace to beat Gymnast into the Puppet Ganon fight. However, Puppet Ganon is very difficult and he actually ended up losing this run and it was actually the very last run he ever did of this game. Sadly, there is no footage of this run because he never highlighted this run since it didn't end up working out being a personal best. So the run just kept staying and staying. And staying it did. 2015 started and the run was still standing strong and it wasn't until the summer of 2015 where the unthinkable was going to happen. Gymnast wanted to go for the biggest milestone of all time, sub 4 hours.
and we just frickin' cut the sub 359 in half. <sighs> wow. Now, this run was truly remarkable. The Wind Waker HD had finally completed in under 4 hours. Junus had now held the world record continuously since October 13th, 2013. It was now summer of 2015, and how long would it even take for someone to ever be able to beat this run, or even Gymnast himself? The run stayed, and stayed, and no one was up to the task of beating it, and Gymnast wasn't even sure himself if he could improve it much further. So it stayed all of 2015, 2016 started, and Gymnast was still at the top, and nothing changed all the way until summer of 2016. When this clip was posted on YouTube by an unknown person in the community named Gurtana. Okay, hey, what's going on, guys, on YouTube and any fellow Wind Waker HD speedrunners here? Um, so, I'm gonna make this quick and I'm gonna make it as clear as possible. I found a glitch in Wind Waker HD that makes you go very very fast. I wanted to get this video made just in case I could never replicate this again. I've done it a couple times already so I'm sure that it wasn't just a once in a lifetime thing. Get this to work again. If you just move around a bit as you yep, here we go. Now I'm letting it I'm letting it sit neutral as you can see. It's neutral. I can't really show the controller and the game. And you don't have to hold Z anymore. Um, okay, <laughs> so the Wii U just hard locked, and then I just, I, I just tap this, you don't have to hold Z, I figured it out, you, you just tap the control stick, and look at that, you just move at warp speed, so I'm gonna move this way, so, look how far I went, look how far I jumped, I'm on all, the all, uh, uh, uh. Oh my god, guys, I really do apologize, but I'm just freaking out right now. As you can see in this clip, Gertana is playing Wind Waker HD on a GameCube controller, and when he releases his analog stick, he flings super quickly to a direction, gaining as he calls it, warp speed. Now, what was going on here? How did this thing even work? How has this not been found yet? So many questions came up, and the community went straight ahead and started to test this glitch out to figure it out. So let's debunk it all at once. So, first, how does this glitch even work? Well, you see, in the original version of Wind Waker on the GameCube, if you pull out a first-person item, which includes the grappling hook, the boomerang, the bow, or the hookshot, Link cannot move as he can only aim around with the analog stick. However, in the HD version of this game, they allow the player to move around with a first person item, then aiming with either the gyroscope controls found in the gamepad or with the C stick. When Nintendo was developing this feature, they made an entirely new animation for walking around on the first person item, and it's this animation that can be abused and used for this glitch. I went ahead and used cheats to force the camera to be displayed in front of Link to better showcase this. As you can see, a normal target camera, and with this case with the grappling hook, walking forward is pretty much the same. However, walking backwards on the other hand, while Link just slowly walks backwards normally in first person, with an item in his hand, you can see him stepping like this. This is where the glitch comes into play. By walking any direction on the analog stick, in this example, let's say forward, if the player on the very next frame holds slightly down in the opposite direction, Link will start gaining negative speed, and Link's speed will be increased by 1.2 times every single frame. A common mistake Nintendo has made in many games in the past is that they forget to cap Link's negative speed, and it can only cap how fast you can go forward. This, for example, can be found in many other titles, such as BLJs or backwards long jumps in Super Mario 64, for example. But either way, this glitch was massive, and it now allowed us to basically gain speed anywhere on the ground, and also, it finally allowed us to super swim. Because Link's speed that was being built up in the negative range, if Link slowly entered the water with negative speed, the game would not change Link's speed since there is no speed cap for it, and that allowed you to maintain your speed and super swim in the water. 
This was even crazier than the original versions, since the glitch that was used in the original required 20 seconds of setup time and it only allowed you to go to maximum 3 islands away. However, with this glitch, if you charge for 2 seconds, you can cross the entire ocean in only one swim. Now you might be wondering how this had not been found before, since it's as simple as just walking in the opposite direction. Well you see, the positioning that was needed to be held in the opposite direction is very precise. And since the change from up to slightly down had to happen in only one frame, no one ever happened to run into this before. The reason Yurtana got it to work is because the Nintendo GameCube controller is not natively supported by Wind Waker HD, and only controllers natively supported were the Nintendo GamePad and the Pro Controller. And because the GameCube controller was not supported by Nintendo themselves and only worked with the help of third party adapters or homebrew itself, the mapping on the analog stick was not set correctly. And because of that, when he was walking forward and then he released this analog stick and it snapped backwards into the middle very quickly, it happened to just slightly hold downwards and it was hitting this perfect positioning known as ESS positioning as we like to refer to it, which caused Link to gain tons of speed. And like this, the grind was back on Wind Waker HD. This glitch was originally posted on June 30th, 2016. The very next day, on July 1st, the community had figured out how to replicate this glitch for speedrunning. By walking a direction and then pausing the game, holding the opposite direction and then unpausing, Link would start this glitch, as we now dubbed the item slide, which made this trick possible to perform consistently as a human being. Due to the timing of this being discovered, Summer Game Stunt Quick was just around the corner and starting its event on the 3rd of July and running to 9th of July that year, but Jimnas did get the chance to see the new skip right before he left and he got this beautiful clip. So, the plan is... Uh, like that. That's what we're doing. Dude! This is huge. No, this is scary. No, this game is dead. This game is f***ing dead now. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Wind Waker HD is now Wind Waker SD. Grappling Hook is Wind Waker. A f***ing grappling hook. After Jimnus got home, on the 12th of July, he set his first world record with item sliding, finishing off with a time of 3 hours, 51 minutes, and 48 seconds. This run was far from perfect, with many super swims failing and having to redo them, but it was a great run for its first time ever using the item slide. Item sliding has changed basically every single part of the run, and going over every change would take hours, so we'll go over the biggest impacts that item sliding had on this run. Looking at the run, you start seeing the impact of this glitch the second the player collects the grappling hook. Every time you have to move across a distance that's further than a couple of rolls, runners favored using item sliding to save time and movement. On top of that, item sliding can be used to cross gaps and jump distances that would not normally be possible. An easy example would be in the main room in Dragon Roost right here. Gymnast will item slide backwards into this wall. He will then, after gaining enough speed, hold up an analog stick and press B to slash his sword. Normally, just slashing the sword would gain you a little bit of distance forward, but because of the built up speed from the item slide, all of Link's speed will be used forward all at once, and this will cause Link to be able to cover gaps and jumps in areas in a single frame, making it almost look like Link is teleporting across rooms. Of course, this glitch was heavily used for super swimming, and runners super swam from every island that was possible, other than a couple of parts in Endgame, because you were required to still have King of Red Lines for, for, for example, fishing up and salvaging chards. Item sledding had also allowed us to finally perform our first sequence break in the game, because by super swimming to Great Fish Island early, and then entering the boat which will give you this weird, hey, you're not supposed to be here yet, and sailing you back to Windfall, that allowed you to actually get bombs before Forbidden Woods. And by having bombs before Forbidden Woods, it basically breaks the entire dungeon and every single puzzle for the first half of the dungeon before you normally obtain the boomerang. Also thanks to item sliding, the 1 in 8 Chan Cyclopes was finally not in the run anymore, so runners did not have to worry about as much luck that a run was based upon previously. Another use of item sliding which Gymnast used for was clipping through objects and walls. Many walls and islands throughout Wind Waker can often fail to check for collision when dealing with high speed values, causing Link to be able to clip through them. 
This can be used, for example, in Hyrule, when we now can skip the puzzle by simply item sliding through the statue. Getting behind objects faster, such as item sliding past Helmrock, also allowed us to perform Helmrock skip much faster than before. All of these strats combined over the entire run in many different locations allowed Jimmys to get a time of 3 hours, 51 minutes, and 48 seconds. But he was not done yet, because on July 19th, he finished the second run with item sliding with an end time of 3 hours, 48 minutes, and 22 seconds. This run was basically a more clean version of his previous run, with one big difference. This route was the first run in Wind Waker HD history that did not get the swift sail. Now on July 24th, a couple of days later, Gymnast improved this run even further with a 34506. The dominance of Gymnast cannot be understated. He single-handedly pushed Wind Waker HD times down time and time again, but it was around this time in July of 2016 where someone would try and finally take the challenge of ending Jim's streak of dominance over The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. And that's where Link 7, well, me, comes into the picture. Just like many other Zelda speedrunners, I also wrote off Wind Waker as being the worst version of speedrun due to the crazy amount of luck involved in the run and the amount of sailing sections, and I favored to actually speedrun the original game all the way back in 2015. But all of that changed when item sliding came out. I started grinding every single day after coming home from SGDQ, and just as Halfo struggled to beat Gymnast back in 2014, I struggled a lot. I lost multiple runs in Ganon's tower, but I kept pushing, and at this time I decided to challenge myself and do a challenge where I would speedrun the game 12 hours every single day until I got a record. During this week of grinding, countless runs dying to endgame just due to nerves, during this period, on October 12th, Gymnast improved this run even further with a time of 3 hours, 43 minutes, and 56 seconds. However, on October the 13th, one day later, this happened. We did it. I did it. I I finally did it. After three years of dominant streak from Gymnast, which is almost unheard of in the speedrunning community, well, in the Zelda community, considering how many runners are interested in Zelda games, someone had finally broken through and beaten the war record from Gymnast. Later on, on October 20th, I was able to improve my own time again with a time of 3 hours, 42 minutes, and 38 seconds. After this point, the game was being optimized like crazy, and there was a tons of newer records set. In early November, Gymnast came back with another time of 3 hours, 42 minutes, and 6 seconds. And after that, another well-known runner that had been speedrunning the game before item sliding, that was always close to top times but never had been able to break through, finally made his first marks in the Windmaker HD history. Rassen Earns, as he's now referred to, set a time of 3 hours, 41 minutes, and 27 seconds on November 30th, 2016. After this point, the record actually stood all the way through November and December, and then finally January came around. In January, the game was actually being ran at Awesome Games Done Quick by me, and this brought a lot of attention to the community. And one of the people on my couch, by the name of Fuzziness, actually ended up also getting a lot of interest in taking this game seriously. On February 28th, I was able to reclaim the record, setting a time of 3 hours, 41 minutes, and 13 seconds, bopping Rassen by about 15 seconds. However, Fuzziness was not done with this game. He started to play Windbaker HD every single day, and he was improving the game rapidly. Fuzzy was able to set a time on March 3rd, getting a 3 hour and 40 minute time, but he was not done yet, because over the next few days he kept doing runs, and he got a 3.39.19, and then on March 9th he set a time of 3 hours, 36 minutes, and 4 seconds. Now this run was incredible, and it was a very good run, and you could tell that he's been spending a lot of time practicing to get this time. However, it was actually not standing for too long, because on April 1st, I was able to pull off a run of a time of 3 hours, 35 minutes, and 58 seconds, finishing off merely 6 seconds ahead of fuzziness. 
Now, you could tell at this point over a four hour speedrun how optimized this was getting by only saving six seconds over the previous record. And many people, including myself, thought that any percent was kind of over with. So I switched over my focus to the 100% category. Rasen and Gymnast ended up switching games and Fuzzy moved on altogether. However, as you all know, from watching any speedruns, there is no such thing as a perfect run, or even a last standing world record. And that could have not been more true, because what was about to be discovered was something that we never saw coming. Oh, oh my god! Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! Oh my god! No! No way! Oh my god! Oh my god! I did it! Oh my god! Oh my god! Now Barrier Skip. Oh boy, where do we even start? Barrier Skip was something that people have been testing for years, dreamed about becoming a reality. Hundreds and hundreds of hours have gone into testing different methods of possibly skipping this thing, all the way back in the original GameCube version, but we have had no luck. Countless hours spent when item sliding came out to test this as well, but nothing was possible. There were leads, and all the way back in August 18th, 2017, Girtana, the original person who discovered the item slide glitch, actually uploaded footage of him being behind the barrier, saying that he had gotten barrier skip. Due to the possibility of homebrew, however, and the possibility of cheating to get behind the, air, the barrier, many people thought that this was fake, because he has shown footage of being behind the barrier. However, on August 20th, a guy by the name of Link Oscuro got this. What? Guys, I did it! 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 I did burn skip! Woohoo! Get it! <laughs> I'm so good at this game, man! <laughs> I did it! The problem was, this confirmed that burn skip was possible, but even him, it took him 50 hours of attempts to get it once. And to our understanding of that current method he used, it required iron boots. And iron boots cannot be achieved early in the game, which meant that even if this was possible with iron boots, it would only save a few minutes, skipping one fight in Hyrule 3. So why was this clip of Girtana getting it so meaningful? Well, as you might have noticed when I played this clip, there was a lot of data up on the screen. After Barrier Skip was confirmed to work, a person with knowledge of homebrewing named Dragon Bane actually designed a program that would not only show the information of Link's exact X, Y, Z positioning values, but it would also record the data to an SD card on the Wii U. So after Gitan actually got this, Dragon Bane can simply get the file from him, replay it on an emulator with cheat codes, then copy Gitan's exact values that he had at the time. And on April 10th, 2017, the day after Girtana got the clip recorded, Dragonbane put out this tweet, confirming that it was possible to do it with just speed and no iron boots required. You just had to be at the exact right spot and within a certain range in speed, and Link could clip through the barrier. So, why was this so impactful? Well, if you look back at the shard I showed earlier, you will notice that you actually visit Hyrule three times. Once after obtaining the first three pearls and beating Tower of the Gods, once after beating Forsaken Fortress 2, and one right in the end. So, by being able to clip through this barrier early, it allowed us to break this game entirely. Well, if we take a look at a shard from earlier, if I update it to how the run would be now, you can see that this is a drastic difference. The actual intention of this route is basically to obtain all items necessary to beat the game, which at this point would include the grappling hook, the leaf, the magic meter, which you get with the leaf, a quiver upgrade so you can have usable arrows in Ganon's tower, as well as bombs to damage yourself for a glitch in Ganon's tower. After you obtain all of these items, you want to simply make your way to Hyrule 2, because you have to enter Hyrule through Hyrule 2, or else the game will crash from endgame cutscenes, due to how cutscenes are set up in this game. 
Now there were some complications with this because you had to do a lot of detouring to be able to actually access Forsaken Fortress 2 early because you needed to use a specific layer glitch by defeating Forsaken Fortress 1 twice which would give you a layer that could unload the door and by doing so you could then access Forsaken Fortress 2 early and from there you could then just skip Helmrock right before, head down to Hyrule 2, perform barrier skip go through Ganon's tower, you can then go defeat Phantom Ganon, get the Light Arrows which would give you the bow, and since you got the Quiver upgrade from earlier, you can actually use the Light Arrows. You then would head up, defeat Puppet Ganon, and after defeating Puppet Ganon, there was only one thing standing in your way. You see, the last platform in this tower requires you to use the Hookshot to make your way up. However, we do not have the Hookshot and there is no easy way to get it, other than actually heading over to Wind Temple. The problem is you have to defeat every single dungeon to actually access a Wind Temple and there is no way to get there early. So you have to perform a glitch called a Zombie Hover, which I mentioned earlier that was heavily used in the original game but was deemed useless in this version. The reasoning for this is because every time you do a zombie hover, if you land on the ground you will always die because how the glitch is performed is by actually dying and right as you stand up if you then perform a jump slash and mash the B button very quickly you can actually start doing the zombie hover glitch by gaining height because the game is constantly trying to cancel your attack because you're dead but if you're pressing the B button quickly enough you're actually going to gain more height than the game is pulling you down thanks to gravity and you can actually make your way up to the top. The problem is you cannot enter the loading zone while you're dead and there's no way to heal yourself with a fairy in a bottle. But by using a fairy in a pod which you broke you can actually survive the zombie hover. However a fairy's movement is completely luck based which meant that you had about a 2% chance to get this to work and each attempt took about 2 minutes to do and it was right in the end of the run so this was a very rough way to complete the game. But if you're able to perform this glitch and get the luck necessary to heal yourself, you could then head up to the rooftop of Ganon's tower, defeat Ganondorf, and by so, actually completing the game, making the game very fast with this route. And already on April 10th, me, Fuzzy, and Gymnast all went ahead and started doing attempts. Me and Fuzzy both went down to Hyrule to attempt the fairy hover, but none of us was able to get this fairy to hit us in midair for 2 hours straight. Gymnas ended up going for the old dungeons route to obtain the hookshot, and he was the first person to complete a run with the barrier skip in 3 hours, 5 minutes and 57 seconds. This run in theory goes under the current definition and a separate category known as all dungeons, but since none of us have been able to complete a true any percent run yet, even though this was the all dungeons run, it still beat the current no barrier skip any percent record, standing for both categories. However, as you can imagine, he beat all of the dungeons, which means that if someone was able to pull off a fairy hover, this would not stand for long, which it did not. Following this, the grind was on like crazy. All three of us runners started to do attempts every single day trying to get this fairy hover. And from April 13th to April 27th, the record was lowered multiple times, going from a 2-3 hour time all the way down to a time of 1 hour, 30 minutes and 15 seconds. Now after this, there was a bit of a break in between the any percent category, and not a lot of runs were being made. However, after a small break in July of 2017, the record was being pushed down even further between me and Gymnast, going down to 128, then a 127, and then ending off with a 122. Now after this 122, the run was being very difficult to improve any further. Because when this 122 ended up taking place, as you can imagine, the actual luck necessary to do this run and the skill was incredible. These runs in the end of July, early August actually used a different method for any percent where you would instead of actually going and unloading the door in Forsaken Fortress 2, you would do a door clip. But the precision and luck needed in this trick was even greater, which meant that any percent runs not only had the luck element of the fairy hover, but it also had door clip. So after the 12234 on August 5th, 2017, the record stayed for a very long time. However, then in November of 2017, this video was posted to YouTube.
Now, what what is this? <laughs> well, let's analyze this video. In the start, we can see that we are pausing the game over and over again. So what is going on exactly? Well, it had been known for a very long time that if Link turned around in the water, the game will add 3 units of negative speed. This is done to be a bit more of a realistic swimming, so if Link turns around, he won't keep swimming in full speed his entire time. However, if you can get Link to turn around frame perfectly over and over and over again, we can actually keep gaining more and more negative speed, since we know that there's no cap for negative speed. But the precision on this trick cannot be understated, as pausing one frame late will cause Link to not gain any speed, and if you pause one frame early, the game will eat your input, which will cause Link to lose a random amount of speed. But if you're able to reach a point where Link has 600 units of speed, which actually means that you have to pause frame perfectly 200 times, you will reach a point to where Link will actually turn past the camera. This is where the newest trick comes into play that made this possible. We had known for a long time, thanks to tool assisted speedruns, that it was possible to do this all along. But the speed needed to make it to the dragon roost was so high that even if a human being was able to pause frame perfectly, it would barely save time. However, what the new discovery had unfolded was that by entering target camera and holding up an analog stick with 600 units of speed, Link will turn past the camera in one frame, causing the game to turn the camera automatically. And since Link keeps turning past the camera, this will actually cause Link to start gaining speed automatically without needing the pause bufferings that was required earlier because the camera flips is doing the job for us. We can after getting enough speed then get an airy fill and just super sim to Dragon Roost, skipping all of early game, saving over 10 minutes in the speedrun. And on the very next day, on the 12th of November, Gymnast got a run with a time of 1 hour, 13 minutes and 36 seconds. Due to how, like, the spawning flags work, we might still be- yeah, okay. Good. <laughs> go. You now cannot get the world record without a manual super swim in this game. Assuming, like, I don't die here. But a 113.36. Oh, I should have waited one more second. Oh well. That is... That is incredible. This marked a new time in Wind Waker HD speedrunning, as this world record made it so that manual super swimming was necessary to actually compete for a record right now. This run ended up staying with record for about 3 weeks until I was able to pull off a time with a manual super swim in 1 hour, 11 minutes, and 34 seconds.
I'm not dying. I'm not dying. I'm not dying. Do not miss your arrow, Zelda. Okay. That's it. New Wind Waker HD Anniversary Record 11134. That's it. God, I thought I was gonna die. Okay, I did it. New record. There it is. That's about 80... That's about 80 hovers on the ferry and, um, until I got it on record pace. Oh. I don't even care if that was a slow Ganon fight. I couldn't risk it. I couldn't. Oh. This run stayed for all of Christmas that year, but then in January 2018, this happened. Alright, so one of the theories that we had on how to potentially skip the ferry hover um, right about the time that barrier skip was found was by taking a morph and killing it to drop a heart while it was up on the final platform because with morphs, you can use the leaf to have them gain height repeatedly. The problem with that is that if you try to kill a morph with a bomb or an arrow, they don't spawn hearts, ever. They don't spawn anything. Morths will only drop stuff, hearts, rupees, drops, etc., if you kill them with your sword. So that theory did not originally work out, unfortunately. However, we get close enough to a morth, just like this, we buffer in a stab, we can sort of kill the morth with the sword, but the morth ends up grabbing onto Link at the same time. So now, if we sh like shake off the morth and kill it with a bow, or with a bomb, it will drop a heart regardless of where it is. And we can use this property to skip having to do the fairy hover. Finally, there was a way to skip the fairy hover. This actually made it so that the biggest recent point in the run was now the manual super swim, and even though Morph Hover did have some luck involved with the angle the Morph was rolling off of Link, it was still a 50% chance of getting a good angle, and each attempt would only take about 10 to 20 seconds compared to the 2 minutes of the Fairy Hover. So over January, February, and March of 2018, Wind Waker HD Any% was more active and alive than it had ever been before since it came out. And how active was it? Well, in just three months, a total of 10 world records were set, dropping the world record down by five minutes. And it was the greatest competition between runners that Wind Waker HD had ever seen. There it is. <clears throat> New Winnipeg reached the any percent record in one hour, seven minutes, and 14 seconds. Boom. Let's freaking go, dude. Let's go, dude. Sub 106, 105, there it freaking is. 105, 46, new win rating, center percent record. There it is. There it is, the dream time, 105. <clears throat> there it is. Thank you!
and thus Pause of Five, I think was the file name, completed his journey in an hour, five minutes, and one second. Shoot it. Okay. We did it. We did it! 104.36, there it is. There it is, we got the record back. 104, baby. Let's go. First ever sub 105. There it is. The milestone has been broken. The curse has been lifted. There it is. Man, I thought I was gonna lose it to the fight again. He kept us doing the extra swing attack. We did it. We did it. Let's go. I was not expecting to get that. <clears throat> it was kind of weird. I've always go offline when I get a record. I never got him first from the day we record. So I'm going to try and finish this run no matter what. So I'm going to try and do an a reset celebration run. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yes. Sub 104, baby! Back to back for record, that's it! Holy crap, that was so close to getting trolled by Zelda, it was so close! We almost, like, missed it! We did it! Holy crap! Holy crap! Sub 105 and Sub 104 back to back in the same day! Absolutely incredible! I do not believe it! I cannot believe I just did that! After this, the world record stayed for quite a while with nothing changing, and then on May 2018, I was able to get a time of sub 103 with a 102.57. After this, a lot of stuff changed. A new runner by the name of Ian Miles had been playing Windmaker HD for every day for about 3 or 4 months at this point, and he was getting very good times. And he was able to make his first mark on the leaderboard and in the world record history by setting a time of 1.02.18 on June 4th. This is it, it's gonna happen. It's finally gonna happen, dude. It's finally gonna happen, it happened. It happened, bro. Let's go, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> But he was not done yet, because one month later, on July 5th, he was able to improve his time once again with a 102.09, but he had one goal in mind, he wanted to push for the sub 1 hour. People started to look into the route at this point and realized that there was one part that was quite slow. You see, up until this point, runners always went to Windfall to buy the sale to avoid a soft lock. But someone figured out that you could actually reroute the game and avoid the soft lock, which would allow you to skip buying the sale. The problem with this is that we would need to implement Door Clip back into the run, which, like I mentioned earlier, was very inconsistent. But Ian had the sub 1 hour in mind, so he was willing to push through. And after implementing this route and actually getting good times with it, he was able to get a time of a 101.29 on July 6th. But he kept improving this even further, because on July 27th, he got a 101.06 and then a 1 hour and 49 second time. And then, after much hard work, this happened. That is how you play Windmaker HD. That's it. That's it. And there it was. Windmaker HD any percent had actually been completed in under one hour, a time that we could have only dreamed of years ago. And he also ended up finishing and optimizing this time a few weeks later with a 5906. And that, my friends, is the record progression for The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD. Or, that's at least what I was planning to say, but during writing the script of this video, 
a new method for door clip that was found that made the trick more consistent and gave you a much higher chance of finishing runs. And thanks to this, Ian was able to keep pushing his time down even further, finishing off with a time of a 58.09, a 57.42, and then finally finish a time off with 57 minutes and 8 seconds. New world record. Nice. Sub 57.10, that's a little bit better than what I was going for, so that's not bad. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> a minute 20 off my best possible time. And that, my friends, is the speedrunning with record progression for The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed. This video took a long time for me to put together. But if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like down below as well as subscribing to the YouTube channel because I post tons of speedrun related content here. And if you want to see any Zelda or Mario speedruns live, then you should check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash link 7 because I speedrun Wind Waker HD and tons of other games at a daily basis. But without further ado, thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you all in the next one.